Hello and welcome to the Lines That Never Were series, where we talk about proposed but forgotten New York City subway projects. In this video, we will talk about the BMT Canarsie Line extension, including its history, remnants, and whether the BMT Canarsie Line extension is needed today. In 1865, the Canarsie Line opened, operating as a steam dummy line. This line opened as a branch of the LIRR Atlantic branch, and served mainly to shuttle passengers from Brooklyn to Canarsie Pier, where ferries were operate further to the Rockways. This line was originally single-tracked, and was double-tracked in 1894. In 1906, the Canarsie Railroad was converted into an elevated line under the Brooklyn Rapid Transit Company and operated from Manhattan Junction, also known as Broadway Junction, to Canarsie Pier. During dual contracts, the BMT Canarsie line was to be completely rebuilt with third rail power in grade separation. However, that section only applied to Manhattan Junction and Rockway Parkway as the section from Rockway Parkway to Canarsie Pier was to be converted into a trolley service by 1920. While the modification process for the BMT Canarsie Line was going on, a new subway called the BMT Eastern District Line was to be built and connected to the BMT Canarsie Line at Manhattan Junction. It would start at 6th Avenue and 14th Street and run under 14th Street and under the East River to serve Northern Brooklyn. Construction started in 1916 and dragged on for eight years due to delays and political bickering from Mayor John Hyland. Due to all of these delays, the line stopped short at Montrose Avenue when the line opened in 1924. When the BNT Eastern District Line opened in 1924, efforts began to extend the line and connect it with the BMT Canarsie Line. More delays began, as originally, after Montrose Avenue, the line was to be elevated with three tracks. But in the end, the plan was to make the connection an underground two-track line. In 1928, the second portion of the BMT Eastern District Line opened from Montrose Avenue to Manhattan Junction, connecting it to the BMT Canarsie Line. Now, the BMT Eastern District Line was called the BMT Canarsie Line, and riders from the Canarsie Line could take the train into Midtown Manhattan. In 1942, the trolley connecting Rockway Parkway to Canarsie Pier was discontinued, as riders now had to use the bus to get from the two areas. The transfer to the bus at Rockway Parkway was interesting because it is connected within fare control, meaning that commuters did not need to get out of the system. In the 1960s, when Spring Creek was to be developed, planners wanted some sort of subway service to service the new developments. Originally, an extension of the IRT New Lots line was considered to extend to Linden Boulevard and beyond, but planners wanted more. When the Cross Brooklyn Expressway was to be built, planners saw this as a chance to build a new train line. Since Robert Moses was out of power by 1968, Planners could now use expressway medians for mass transit. The BMT Canarsie line would be entirely altered, as it would be relocated on the LIRR Bay Ridge branches right of way. At Livonia Avenue, the BMT Canarsie line would split into two branches. One would continue along the Bay Ridge branches right of way to Flatbush Avenue Brooklyn College, while the other would head east to Spring Creek. Both branches would be on the median of the proposed Cross Brooklyn Expressway. Rockway Parkway and East 105th Street stations would be abandoned, though the Canarsie Yard would remain operational to continue to store trains. 
Unlike many other projects of the Program for Action, the BMT Canarsie Line extension was not canceled because of the 1975 fiscal crisis. It was canceled because of community opposition to the new expressway in 1973, two years before the fiscal crisis hit. However, when the extension was canceled, planners still wanted to extend the IRT New Lots line, but that plan was immediately canceled due to the fiscal crisis two years later. Spring Creek was eventually developed, but is still extremely far from the New York City subway. Unlike many other proposals in a program for action, the BMT Canarsie Line extension plans actually survive into the 21st century. The branch to Flatbush Avenue Brooklyn College is being studied again, but this time under the Interborough Express. The Interborough Express would use the same alignment that the Canarsie Line extension would use, but this would go much further than Broadway Junction and Flatbush Avenue. It would go from Brooklyn Army Terminal on the western coast of Brooklyn all the way north to Jackson Heights, Roosevelt Avenue. As for the other branch to Linden Boulevard, the MTA would be studying extending the nearby IRT New Lots line to either Flatlands Avenue or Gateway Mall. So the BMT Canarsie line extension might have a happier ending than any other project we featured on this series which is happy and sad at the same time. Happy in the sense that we might actually see a new rail line that will come out of the BMT Canarsie Line extension, yet sad in the sense that we are seeing New York City backtrack on so many of its ambitious plans. As many other extension plans featured on this series, the BMT Canarsie Line extension does not have many remnants, yet there are a few, if you know where to look. On the L train from Atlantic Avenue to New Lots Avenue, you'll see a massive open cut with a few train tracks. What does that have to do with the BMT Canarsie Line extension? Well, that open cut was where the L train was supposed to be relocated for the BMT Canarsie Line extension. The elevated structure that the L currently uses would be removed, and the L train would use the open cut to around Livonia Avenue, where it would split into two branches. The first branch would continue using that open cut to Flatbush Avenue, while the second branch would split to the east and run to Linden Boulevard. I think that we should revive the BMT Canarsie Line extension, but we should do it in a different way. The first is to build the aforementioned Interborough Express. This is an obvious choice because it provides another rail connection from Brooklyn to Queens other than the G train, which doesn't even service central or eastern Queens to Brooklyn. The Q58 has to pick up the slack, and the Q58 sees 27,000 riders in 2019, making it the seventh most used bus route. That is not a surprise, as the MTA runs back-to-back -back buses on the route to service the mountain of riders that the Q58 sees, showing how much the IBX would be beneficial to the city. Moreover, it would give cross-Brooklyn riders a more serious choice than the overcrowded B6 and B82 buses. The B6 on Bay Parkway sees 34,000 riders in 2019, making it the fourth most used bus route in the city while the B82 on Kings Highway sees 26,000 riders in 2019, making it the ninth most used bus route in the city. This shows that Cross Brooklyn is another heavily used corridor that deserves a rail line. The second project to serve the growing Spring Creek neighborhood is to reconsider the IRT New Lots Line extension down to Gateway Mall or Flatlands Avenue. The B13 and B83 or the buses that primarily shuttle commuters to Gateway Mall see a combined ridership of 12,000 riders. Combined with a portion of the B6, one of the heavily used bus routes in the city, servicing a portion of the proposed line, I think that it is abundantly clear that the New Lots line extension should be reconsidered. The extension would use existing yard tracks to Livonia Yard. Once the line reaches Livonia Yard, the line would curve to the west and go under or above Elton Street. Elton Street is significantly wider than Linwood Street, 
and could therefore be much better suited to a subway or elevated line. Stations would be placed at Linden Boulevard and Flatlands Avenue Gateway Mall. Linden Boulevard Station will be designed similar to how Harlem 148th Street is designed, where the station is built directly on top of the yard to drive down costs. Finally, a transfer from Livonia Avenue to Junius Street needs to be done in the next year or so. There is already a narrow footbridge that connects the two stations, meaning that the transfer could be done for cheap. What needs to be done is a shifting around of gates, some elevators, and the addition of a second footbridge for everyday pedestrians. Fortunately, the MTA will be doing this transfer once Junius Street gets elevators. The BMT Canarsie Line extension was a way to serve new commuters using whatever opportunities planners had. However, when that opportunity vanished, the plans were canceled along with it. But those plans are being revived in different forms as we speak, which is good because new proposed rail lines would serve these dense, transit-dependent corridors. Anyway, that marks the end of this video. What are your thoughts on the BMT Canarsie Line extension? Let us know in the comments below, and have a good day.